Uh, for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Bilal. I'm one of the PTY ones. I'm going to start off with a case presentation. So we have a 21 year old male, no significant past medical history, who comes to your ED after he cut a piece of his left index finger off while chopping vegetables. Uh, so just briefly, what I'm going to go over is the relevant anatomy of the hand, the important aspects of the history and physical in these patients, some first aid that we need to know, and the overall ED management of these patients. So in terms of the blood supply, on the palmar and dorsal side, we have these arches that are formed from the radial and ulnar arteries. They anastomose to kind of form an arch, which is going to give blood supply to the fingers, and they move along the lateral aspect of the bone. That's important for us because if somebody comes in with an injury uh, across the fingertip, it's going to be very hard to stop the bleeding. So just have an idea that there's arteries running along there. Uh, for the cutaneous innervation of the hand, it's formed by the radial nerve, the ulnar nerve, and the median nerve. If you look at the palmar side of the hand, it's mainly the median and ulnar nerve. And on the dorsal side, we also have some innervation from the radial nerve with the first three and a half digits. For motor innervation, also medial, ulnar, and radial nerve. Uh, this is important for us to know because it's pretty easy to test all three of these nerves with some basic tests in the ED. So for the median nerve, you can have the patient touch the tip of their index finger to the tip of their thumb, tell them to make an okay sign. For the ulnar nerve to test it, have them abduct their fingers against your resistance. So just tell them to spread their fingers out. And for the radial nerve, you can have them raise their hand up like they're telling someone to like stop doing something. Uh, so for the history, what are some important things you guys would want to know about this, the accident? Yeah, time is good. Dirty or clean, yeah. Uh, another really important one is hand dominance. Um, whether someone is right-handed or left-handed, because you will know based off that if this injury kind of makes sense or not. Someone who is left-hand dominant shouldn't have an injury from cutting, from cutting vegetables on, on their dominant hand. They should be, should be on the opposite hand. Uh, their occupation is important. You wanna know if these people like really need their hands for their livelihood. Uh, how long ago it happened. The number of digits involved. If they preserved the amputated tissue and if they preserved it properly. Uh, the exact mechanism of the injury, what comorbidities they have, and if they're on any anticoagulants, you're probably not going to bleed out from this injury, but it's something good that you should, you should write, document. Uh, for your physical exam, you should definitely know the exact level of the amputation, which structures are involved, so that, and the neurovascular status, so check pulses and do all those tests to assess that their nerves are, that there's no like severed nerve or anything like that. And examine if it's very contaminated, if there's like dirt or feces on the wound. For imaging, you don't necessarily need a plain radiograph, but all the sources that I, rec that I read recommended that you should probably get one just to see if there's any fracture that's gonna need repair and you don't wanna like miss an open fracture especially. Uh, labs, if it's just an isolated injury to a fingertip, you probably don't need them. There probably wasn't much blood loss, but if this is in conjunction with a bunch of other injuries and part of a larger trauma, then you're gonna wanna assess for acute blood loss and things like that. Also, if you suspect that this patient is gonna need any type of operative management, you should just speed up the process and get pre-op labs. Uh, so first aid of how to manage an amputated digit is important because it's a uh, one, it can help uh, change the management of someone. And two, it's also pretty, a pretty common board question. So if you have an amputated digit, the first thing you should do is wash it with sterile saline and then cover it in a saline soaked gauze. After that, place it in a watertight bag and place that bag in a bag of ice water. You don't want it to have any direct contact with ice because that'll probably lessen the chances that it will be able to be replanted. Uh, so I'm gonna, the first injury I'm gonna talk about is digital tip injuries without any exposed bone. Generally, these injuries are just gonna be like avulsion injuries with a few millimeters of skin. If you don't have any exposed bone or any nail bed involvement, you can manage these pretty conservatively with uh, wound dressing in the ED. 
So you just place gauze over the injury and try to avoid the surrounding tissue to prevent maceration and just wrap it up really nicely. Instruct the patient to change the dressing every single day and dip the affected digit in, a, in like a bath of water with antibiotic soap. The difficult part with these is gonna be just achieving hemostasis. And I found a kind of cool uh, a description of how to achieve hemostasis on a Allium blog post. Uh, the first thing you do is start with an epinephrine dip. So just like with any minor wound, you wanna address the patient's pain. If you start with this, uh, you have the patient basically place the affected digit in 10 to 20 cc's of lidocaine with epi. This is gonna numb the pain and it's also gonna help stop the bleeding because the epinephrine will vasoconstrict the vessels. This probably won't be enough. So the next thing you can do is take a basic tourniquet from an IV start kit and a needle driver from the suture kit. Take the tourniquet, cut it in half, place it at the proximal phalanx and clamp your hemostat around it. Then you can crank it about five or six times until you reach a level where the bleeding has stopped and it's not too uncomfortable for the patient. And uh, remember that you don't wanna leave the tourniquet on for too long. So just kind of monitor how long the patient has had the tourniquet on for. Uh, the next thing you're gonna do is, for the next uh, step, you're gonna need some dermabond and suction tubing. Uh, so dermabond is not gonna work unless your field is really, really dry. So after applying the tourniquet, ensure that the bleeding has stopped and get some gauze to kind of really dab the area really well and make sure that there's no leftover blood. After this, you can apply Dermabond in several consecutive layers with fanning or air in between. I actually had a patient like this in CCT and after fanning with gauze for about four minutes, it got a little bit annoying. So I got some suction tubing, connected it to the compressed air and had the patient hold it himself. I came back and it was dry and I was able to remove the tourniquet. <laughs> um, this is good because you might be busy with other stuff and your time is better spent than holding a gauze and fanning somebody. <laughs> um, for antibiotics, there's really no clear cut guidelines or evidence for these injuries. But what I really found was if you have a really dirty wound or a patient who has a lot of risk factors like diabetes, vascular disease, or an immunocompromised state, you can prescribe them with a short course of Keflex to cover for staph and strep. If you have an injury with exposed bone, you can technically manage this in the ED as long as the bony protuberance is less than 0.5 centimeters in length. You can use something called a rangeur to kind of trim down the bone. But after talking to like a few attendings, I should state that a lot of ED doctors will not do this if you have ortho in-house. Uh, this would probably come more into play if you're in a rural area without any easy way to get the patient to see an orthopedist. Also, if you have any injury that involves one of the bony phalanxes of the finger, you should probably have ortho see the patient or transfer them if you have transfer available. Uh, so the first step in managing this, just like an injury with no exposed bone is gonna be pain management. And you can do a digital block for this, a digital block for this. If you look at the nerves of the finger, they move along in a lateral position along with the arteries in a two, four, eight, and 10 o'clock position. These are just branches of the ulnar and median nerve, and they're going to provide innervation to the finger, the skin, the fingertip, and the nail bed. Uh, to perform the digital block, traditionally, we use 1% lidocaine without epinephrine. Uh, the first step is to kind of go to the proximal phalanx lateral to the knuckle and form a superficial, superficial wheel with lidocaine. Then inject slowly towards the palm, uh, sorry, move the needle slowly towards the palm and inject one to c two cc's while withdrawing. It's really important to withdraw slowly because you're using a 25 gauge needle and the lidocaine is not gonna come out that fast. I actually made that mistake myself and then the patient had to be re-injected. Uh, so the actual procedure after cleaning the area, performing a block, apply a tourniquet like we talked about earlier, uh, stabilize the affected digit with one hand. And so, uh, sorry, first step, clip off part of the nail because now you have a piece of nail with nothing underneath it. It's not really, it doesn't really have any use. So just clip off part of the nail, stabilize the finger and use the rangeur to just clip off pieces of bone until you have enough pulp 
covering bone to form just kind of a basic wound uh, closure. And you don't have to worry about hurting any of the tendons because you measured first and made sure that it was less than 0.5 centimeters, which is away from where the tendons attach to the digit. So after clipping off some of the bone, you can take sutures, drive them through the nail bed and into the pulp side of the finger and, for, and uh, close the wound. To dress the wound, you can put zero form gauze dressing and put some thick gauze on top of this and wrap it around the hand with some Curlex. You wanna make it as bulky and cartoonish looking as possible because it's really gonna help with the patient's comfort. And arrange follow up with a hand surgeon after, which should be really easy. Um, the next thing I'm gonna go over is antibiotics with exposed bone. Again, I couldn't really find a lot of strong research on this. I found one randomized control trial that took place at a hospital in Israel over four years. They had 58 patients with fingertip amputations with exposed bone. Every single one of these patients had wound debridement, washout, and closure inside the OR. Half of the cohort had three days of IV antibiotics during an admission, and the other half were discharged with no antibiotics. So it was like go big or, or nothing at all. Um, this isn't super like useful for us in the ED. We're probably in any ED in America because we're not gonna routinely send these patients to the OR to have their wounds washed out if it's just an isolated injury. And we're also not gonna admit someone for three days of IV antibiotics for this injury. But I think one really good takeaway is that we should be really thorough with our wound cleaning. And it's something that we should not slack on. Being clean is probably one of the best things for the patient because they're gonna, not gonna end up with a really bad infection. And from talking to ED docs and looking at the literature, most people told me that they would just give antibiotics in this case because it's kind of approaching a situation now where you have an open fracture and five days of Keflex isn't gonna be the worst thing for this patient. Uh, to conclude our case, our patient had a digital tip injury with no exposed bone, and he promised us that he would never cook again and only order takeout going forward. <laughs> uh, so again, the key points with these injuries, make sure to do a thorough physical exam to evaluate neurovascular status, achieve pain control with either one of the two techniques that we talked about. Um, they're probably gonna need a digital block, but you can try the first technique initially. Uh, thorough wound care and cleaning and just be aggressive with achieving adequate hemostasis. Any questions?